Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Tao was just something else. Some people say he was better than Fisher. Now let's put it this way. If he wasn't better than Fisher, he was as good as Fisher. Tao was extremely inventive and resourceful. Like he was very much like Port Morphy, the pride and soul of chess. He loved to drink, and who would believe in this picture he looked older than what he really was? You wouldn't think Tao here was in his 70s. This was actually one of his last games he played against Kasparov. And this game, or this year if you like, was his last. Tao here was only 55 years old. But look how much older he looked. Let's roll back to 1964, when Tal was much younger. He has the white pieces, and this game was played in Amsterdam against Tringoff. He still played earlier only once, and was beaten in just 20 moves. One thing I have difficulties with is definitions. Does anyone know what a miniature game is? It's an impossible term to define. We can all agree a miniature is a short game, but the problem is with attaching a number to that game. I would argue 20 or less moves is considered to be a miniature, but this is a very subjective topic. We have the details of this game, so I guess we are ready to shoot. Tell kick things off with an E4 opening. And Trinkov responded with this move. This g6 move opens up many perspectives. It's always been and will always be a very popular choice of play for North. d4 by Tau. Got the bishop to come out. And with a queenside knight being developed, Trinkov goes for this very simple response. 90% of all games. It's all about central control. The player against central control will have an advantage, but if you check out this engine game, you will also notice exceptions do exist. This game, this engine game speaks for itself. Check it out and you will see what I mean. Tom here developed his other knight. And he's just waiting to see how Trinkov moves on. He opted for this rather prophylactic move. But is he also passive? You know, it's one move of many Trinkov could go for. For sure, he's in no rush to get any of his major pieces going. Tal was not a person who would sit back and wait. Do you think he was given his nickname for nothing? Being the magician from Riga was Tal's second name. He loved to attack, but you can't create chances from absolutely nowhere. But after all, we're talking about Tal. He was one of the very few players who could do this. He came in with this type of aggressive gesture. So... What did he try to accomplish? This bishop coming into g5 is provocative. He aims to provoke a response to get him attacked. If you chase after him using this pawn, back him off here, just for the sake of it. Let's get north to pin this knight. If you reciprocate this attack, if you get rid of this bishop to the knight, Use a queen to recapture. What you have here is something quite superb. Now, how does North make any progress? If you find this bishop here on e3, in any way dangerous, should you challenge him? If you ignore and develop this bishop, if these two bishops come off, knight d7, castles something like this attack on the bishop will land north plenty of problems 
Get this bishop to reposition here, and south has full domination. This bishop here on e6 rules the entire board. He stops e7 from even moving. The knight on the king's side is paralyzed. One major problem north has is space. If you want to activate this king side knight, you have g5. But when this challenge is created, north is going nowhere. Knight h6 is now possible, but it will not be recommended. If you take and take, when this guy is eliminated, there is nothing you can do. Now, this is one of many variations I have looked at, and this is how positions can get complicated. If we come back to the actual game, Trinkoff calculated this visual on g5 is relatively harmless and deemed it a very strong move to go for this attack on the queen side. These positions can get pretty tricky. Do you cover this pawn? And if so, how? This guy can be covered in one, two, three, four, four ways without losing material instantly. There is b3, rook b1, you can retreat the bishop, and four, you can go chasing after this queen. Some moves are obviously far stronger than others, but let's consider none of the moves we suggested. Tao's idea here was spot on. He preempted this move by getting the queen to live to the second, and he's hoping Trinkoff to go for it. This is one very juicy pawn, but can you work out if it is safe to have him eliminated? Different people have different ideas. We are certainly looking to see if this pawn on b2 is poisoned and if it could be removed. I would have gone through the what ifs, but this is not necessary. Trinkoff so no reason why it couldn't take and just went for him. Everyone can see what is coming. And Tao uses this position to charge after the queen. Queen a3, and Tao has just sacrificed a pawn. His pieces are looking to make it easier into the game. And this is a compensation you aim to gain by offering a single pawn. Tao is looking for more though. What he wants to do is to find a magic way to trap the queen. And this is easier said than done sometimes. He set off with this bishop response and Trinkov is fully aware of the cost associated with the gaining of this pawn on the queen's side. He immediately got his queen to back off and if she gets in danger Trinkov will be able to get her to return to where she was. For Many, a pawn is a pawn. And depending on the position, this could be the difference between winning and not winning. Time just to get his king to safety. And whatever he has cooking, he will show us later. Trinkov didn't like the looks of this bishop on c4 and took no chances. He cuts him off in this way. But Tao is not amused. He prepared this move. And these are the things you really to look out for. It's this rook's proximity to the king that is sitting on the very same file. There are a few pawns in the way obstructing, but you need to be careful. These pawns can be traded in a jiffy and the king would otherwise be exposed. I'm sure just like anyone else, Trinkov is too aware of this. Since the mid-60s, chess has really made a giant leap. We didn't have the chess programs or chess engines we have today. In fact, what am I talking about? We didn't have any engines as we know them to be today. And if we had one or two programs, they were not only prototypes, but they were extremely weak to challenge our strong players. It wasn't until the 80s when engines were stronger and stronger. And where would we be today without them? 
The point I'm trying to make is that back in the 60s, when this game was played, no one had the software we have today to guide us through. So learning was done in the old fashioned way. If we are not seen a move that has been out of character, we really need to see here with Tringle's coming up response. If he's six, can somewhat be understood, what do you make of this response? If this move looks passive, for sure, the aim is to launch after this bishop, right? I didn't think so either. If Tringoff wants b5, he has c6 to chase after the bishop. So the question, and a move that raises red flags, is what a6 does, and where does Tringoff go for it? Don't try to take advantage. He retreated this bishop to evoke North to do something with this pawn on d6. Any ideas if Tau succeeds? Well, let's find out. This bishop was attacked. The pawn came off. This pawn also disappeared. And what follows next is typically something only Tau will go for. I'm going to give you all the time you need to think this one over. Find the move. You are a much better player than you think. So, before I pause, take your best three shots and rank them in order of how you would play them. I'm back in just a sec. Okay, has anyone gone for a bishop repositioning? And if so, where did you place him? If you did, this one in three could look fine. Has anyone looked at this bishop offer on f7? What happens if you take with a check and would this work? If the bishop is arrested, what does his knight check do? Back the king off to f8 and his job done. There's a crushing response, and provided you are able to find it, you can easily win this game. It's a pretty hard one. You want to spend time here. It looks insane. But this is a move, if you get rid of the rock, the tactic is to get to relinquish control of the light squares on d7 and e6, mainly e6. Come in with this bombshell. And with the king forced west, follow us through another check right after the knight blocks. This is the check you're looking for. After this king is forced further west, through this check, the king west again. Let's try and figure this one out. Does this check on e6 work? It has to, but maybe faster is his takes here. If you try and cover, chase after this rook and north is busted. Rook d8, takes, takes, and now this attack on the queen and his lights out for north. If you dare cover in this way, when this check appears, is lights out with a checkmate. Queen e8 to block and queen takes. And with the king having nowhere to go, this is what we have, and let's hear it. I think this is a checkmate. Eh? Not everything works here for south. If after this knight check, you get the king to back off to this square, if you go for this type of tactic, once the rook comes off, queen d6 does nothing anymore. There is no check, and because this bishop can return to c8, this is how north is saved. So coming back to this position, handing over this bishop on f7 does not work. It's critical in a way, but it will depend on how north proceeds. After this knight check, 
by getting the king to return to e8. This could work in favour of north. So now that we are somewhat convinced getting rid of this pawn on f7 might not work, have you considered how Tao puts his signature on this one? This is the move he went for. And let's see what queen d6 does. By the way, has anyone spotted this? Was this possibly your first, second, or even third attempt? Okay, let's see what happens. Queen d6 appears to be a blunder in a way, but you don't get to hear this. So we know it's not. So not only the special when f4 is sitting, and sitting in quite deeply, but with this queen repositioned to d6, Tau exposes another minor piece. Let's consider the two main and obvious responses. One is to get rid of this bishop, and two, to eliminate the knight. What happens if this bishop is arrested? Can you now offer this bishop two, offering him with this takes? Surprisingly, he does. Remove this bishop, and it's not knight g5 because the queen will have him for breakfast, but this is what you're looking for. If you now get rid of this knight, once this spot on d5 is blocked out, you now you can get in with this knight check. King e8 forced will lead to this takes with a discovery because north has normal moves with this queen coming off to the rook. When this check materializes, north is again toast. There is a mate brewing in the background, and the only thing there is, is to just delay it. It should be five. Rook takes check. It should be six. Another piece comes off with another check, and after knight e7, this is what we have, and let's hear it. Checkmate. So, coming back, Tau can go for basically anything and still can exploit all the big gaps only because of the position of this king that is yet to castle. I nearly forgot option number two. What happens if the knight comes off? It's not something we really need to analyse in any real depth, only for one reason. This is how Trinkov plays it. Tau dropped the knight. He now has another bishop hanging, unless he pulls him out, and yet he's going for bullseye. This is what he does, and he's looking for a checkmate in one single move. If you try and block this checkmate in this way, there is this move we saw earlier, and north bites the farm. Knight of six to stop the mate will have this guy eliminated, and all sorts of nasty things are going to happen. If you attack the queen, problem comes from the west. Takes here with a check, and when the rooks are forced off, king is seven, and it's game over. Even this knight takes check, offering another minor piece works. Remove the knight, and this is what you get. A beautiful way to end this game. And let's hear it for the nth time. Check me, amigo. Returning to the game is all about how we deal with this very position. Trinkov chose to cover this check by getting the knight to step in, but it was still all about to end in the next few moves. This attack is tremendously powerful. This was the moment when another bishop was offered. When Tau offered him with his takes, it's game over basically. If you don't take, let's go for king d8. If bishop g5 check and knight f6 to block, can you work this one out? This is what you need. Remove the rook, and this is how you end it. And let's hear it using something different. Okay, checkmate. I think there is another way to do it. It's a tourist route. But it still works. Grab the knight with a check. When this bishop comes off, come in with his takes check. 
And via this king responds. There is this check. King back to d8. And we have the same story as before. We move this pawn. This is a key move. Take here. And with these takes, we have another mate. And let's hear it again. This is their checkmate, first part, schrecklich. I really lost my own tracks here. Okay, it was here when this bishop was offered. We looked at what happens if the bishop is not eliminated. Let's check out the situation if this bishop comes off. And this is how Trinkov played it. We saw something very similar. The principle does not change. Tau jumped the knight in with a check. His majesty backed off. And through this check, Trinkov just resigned. I'm not stopping here. Let's finish this one off before we wrap things up. If king d8, we have this check. Once the king is forced here, you don't even need the rook on d1 to checkmate. The combo between the queen and knight is often far more effective than having the rook. In this case, <laughs> we have both. Come in with this check and we did get to hear it quite a number of times today. Let's use another sound to confirm we will finish things off. Checkmate. If now we look at this variation, after 97, coming with this check, and this has to be a far more spectacular way of ending this game. After King D8, this is an absolutely amazing way to end this game. And let's hear it for the last time today. I don't know what is more painful. Do you get checkmated by a knight or a single pawn? In today's game, it was neither. And Trinkoff avoided these last two moves. If you count the moves in this game, does this qualify as a miniature? It doesn't appear to be because of the extensive analysis we provided. If you count the moves today, we only saw 17 of them. And this is how Tao shows his class. Some players make things look so easy, and Tao was one of them. He didn't really care what piece he was going to offer. And how many times did we see him handing over his big lady to get there in the end? There are countless of cases where the queen has been sacrificed to win a game. Gary Kasparov sacked his queen against Kramnik in the very opening. Houdini sacked his queen against Stockfish in an impossible game. And this is where you can find the game. So if you're looking at another one, another impossible and incredible engine game, check this link out where we have another queen sack in the very opening phase of this game. I have recently finished another edition with Wesley sacrificing his queen on four different occasions. As soon as I release this one, I will add the link here. If the link already shows, well, isn't this a lucky day? And this was all for today. And we'll be back with more. So until soon, everyone, your chess puzzler here. And whatever you do, safety always first. <laughs> <laughs>